Why airflow is a common question about airflow. Why do I need airflow? Why should I use it? In this video, I would like to give you five reasons why airflow might be the tool that you need. My name is Mark Lamati, and if you enjoy that content, please like and subscribe. That will help me a lot. And without further ado, let me show you the scariest image that you will ever see in your life. This is the data ecosystem in 2021. You can imagine how bigger it is in 2023. This is overwhelming and scary. Now, if we zoom in a little bit and focus on the data engineering world, usually you have those tools such as Airbyte and Fivetran to extract the data, then Compute Engines to transform the data, such as Databricks or Spark, as well as data lakes and data warehouses where to load the data, such as Snowflake, Redshift, and so on. But we still have a lot of tools to deal with, isn't it? Let's take a look at a typical example. Imagine that you have those sources and you want to extract the data using Fabtrain, Airbyte, or another tool, then transform the data with DBT or Databricks and load the data into a data warehouse like Snowflake. The point is you have two things to solve here. The first one is how do you integrate those tools so that they work together? And the second one is how do you connect the dots between those tools so they are executed in the correct order? You want to extract the data first, then transform the data and load this data. Well, this is where you need Airflow. Airflow is an orchestrator and the goal of Airflow is to orchestrate and manage those different tools together so that you can build data pipelines where each step will be executed in the correct order. In this case, you extract the data first with Airbyte, then you transform the data with Databricks, and finally you load the data into Snowflake. Without Airflow, you don't have this unified way of managing your tools together. Indeed, you will have to take a look at Airbyte, for example, if there is a connection with Databricks, and then in Databricks to take a look if there is a connection with Snowflake, and so on. You can imagine how inconvenient that can be. But that's not all. If we take a look at the Airflow UI, you can see what's happening with the tools your data pipeline works with. For example, this retail data pipeline, which is by the way a project that you can build from scratch by following the video somewhere here. You want to know what's happening in DBT or Google Cloud Storage, you just need to click on the corresponding task, then take a look at the logs, and that's it. You don't have to switch over different UIs, and that will save you a lot of time. Obviously, you can monitor your tasks and data pipelines as well pretty easily just by looking at the states of your tasks as well as your DAG runs, as you can see right there. Something else that people wonder about Airflow is the scalability. Am I able to run as many tasks as I want? That's a good question. And if you want to run like three tasks or thousands of tasks, guess what? You can do that. With Airflow, you can run as many tasks as you want as long as you have enough resources and the budget for that. By the way, with Airflow, you can run it on top of popular frameworks such as Celery, Dask, or Kubernetes, so you can execute your tasks and data pipelines in parallel and on different machines. Last but not least, Airflow has three main components. The web server for the user interface, the scheduler to schedule your tasks and data pipelines, and the metadatabase to store the metadata related to your Airflow instance. But in production, you want to make sure that those components are reliable. For example, the scheduler goes down. Well, in this case, you are in big trouble because you cannot run any more tasks. But in Airflow, you are able to replicate those components so that if the scheduler goes down, you still have other schedulers to schedule your tasks and your data pipelines. Same thing with the metadatabase and the web server. So the first reason why Airflow is that with Airflow, you can efficiently manage and monitor your data stack with reliability and scalability. Moving on to the second reason, remember that image, that's a lot of tools we need to integrate. But the question is, do we have those integrations in Airflow? Well, let me show you a website. If you go to the following link, you can see on the left that Airflow has over 100 integrations. For example, Airbyte, Kafka, Spark, and so on. What does it mean? It means that you don't have to reinvent the wheel to interact with those tools. And if the tool you want to interact with doesn't exist, guess what? You can interact with it using Python code, or you can even create your own integration and add it as a plugin to your Airflow instance. Because at the end of the day, the good thing about Airflow is its modularity. Indeed, when you install Airflow, you install the Apache Airflow core package. And if you want to add functionalities 
operators and so integrations to it, you just need to install the corresponding provider. For example, you want to interact with Databricks, then you install the provider Databricks, same thing with Snowflake, you install the provider Snowflake, and so on. To sum up, the second reason why Airflow might be great for you is the fact that it has a lot of integrations and customizations. Okay, so we know that we can efficiently orchestrate our data stack with scalability and reliability, and we have a lot of integrations in the data pipelines, but we haven't touched those data pipelines yet. In Airflow, everything is coded in Python. So as long as you know Python, you are good to go. It's a pretty easy language and it is extremely flexible and powerful. Let me show you how to create a data pipeline from scratch in Airflow. First thing first, you will always make the following imports to create a DAG and a task. Then you define the DAG object, the data pipeline. Here you are saying that you want to start scheduling your data pipeline the 1st of January 2023. Then you want to run it every day at midnight. You add a description, my DAGs does that, and you add the tag team A to indicate on the Airflow UI that this DAG belongs to team A. So you can filter on it. Under the DAG object, you define the tasks, extract, transform, and load, and finally, the dependencies. You can see that you are able to share data between your tasks pretty easily just by returning the value and taking that value back as a parameter of the next task. That's what you are doing between extract, transform, and load. Just like that, you have successfully created your data pipeline, but you might argue that this data pipeline is very easy. What if you want to get files from your F3 bucket, but you don't know in advance what those files will be? However, you want to create a task per file. In this case, Airflow has this ability to create dynamic workflows by using a new feature, which is dynamic task mapping. Just by using partial and expand method, you are able to create dynamic workflows. So if you don't know in advance what you will have, still you can create tasks based on that. And that opens so many possibilities and use cases with Airflow. So the third reason why Airflow is so great is the fact that you can have dynamic workflows and those workflows are coded in Python, which is why they are so powerful. For the next reason, I would like to show you an image that I'm sure we all been there at some point where the data pipeline breaks and we don't even know why. I could tell you in this video that you have the following data pipeline and the last task fails. If the issue is within the tasks of the data pipeline, then it's pretty easy to troubleshoot it. But in the real world, that's not what's happening. In the real world, maybe this issue was caused by an upstream task that you don't even know that it exists. For example, you can have different data pipelines belonging to different teams. And maybe this failure was caused by this very upstream task. But again, you have no idea that this task is causing a failure in your task. So how do you know that? How do you debug that? How do you troubleshoot that? This is where you need data lineage. If you don't know what is data lineage, Think of it as a way of tracing the complex relationships between your data sets and your data ecosystem. So that if something goes wrong or if a data set has been changed or modified, you know exactly why, how, and when it has been modified. Basically, you have this map with your data sets, your ecosystem, and you can see the interactions between your data sets. Now, with Airflow, you have this built-in integration with Open Lineage. So just by using another tool like Marquez, you are able to get this map using Airflow. And since Airflow is the orchestrator and works with all the tools of your data stack, you can imagine why Airflow is the best place to implement data lineage. So the fourth reason is data lineage and monitoring capabilities. The last one, and maybe actually one of the most important ones, is the community. Airflow has a huge community. Airflow has over 30,000 of users on Slack, almost 3,000 of contributors, and you can see how many commits, pull requests, and so on, and how active the Airflow repository is just by looking at the following metrics. And I think when you decide to choose a tool as important as an orchestrator, you need to make sure that this tool will be well supported and you will be able to find the resources that you need, not only to learn about this tool, but also to find the support and the help that you will obviously need at some point in your journey. So that's the five reasons of why Airflow is great and might be the good tool for you. You can efficiently orchestrate your data stack with reliability and scalability. You have a lot of integrations and customizations available with Airflow and the community keeps adding new integrations such as Cosmos to have your DBT projects 
in Airflow. You can create dynamic workflows, so you can create tasks based on something that you don't know in advance. You have this monitoring and data lineage capability, which is truly important in the real world production environment. Then last but not least, this huge active community, so you can show that Airflow will still be around 10 years and you have support, documentation, and videos like this one to help you along your journey. I hope you enjoyed that video. Take care and see you for the next one.